Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW2020 video. You could say it is the greatest TW video ever. Of course, I'm recording this just before by Clash, and that is of course Randy Orton versus Edge. We have TakeOver War Games today, William Regal's favourite event. And we have the best of the superstars from NXT Revolution, our women's brand, and NXT Wrestling, our male brand. It's been good booking into this because it's setting us up for tournament season, which will be happening shortly. All videos on YouTube, and hopefully I can get them streamed on Twitch as well. And that's going to be the May Young Classic and the Dusty Cup. So, yeah, the brackets are already written out, so as long as no one gets injured, hopefully we'll be in for a good time. Of course, it is one of the major events as a takeover, so there shall be some people leaving to go to the main roster, but we'll cover them either during the show or after, should they not be on the card. Small things to update since the last video on YouTube, and that is John Cena's gone. He's unhappy, he asked for his release. So I kind of thought, okay, cool, John doesn't really wrestle too much. It's like WrestleMania and probably won't wrestle again to next year's WrestleMania. So that's 600 grand a month that I can save. So thank you for putting over Andrade. I'm sorry that Stu Bennett becoming colour commentator for SmackDown pissed him off and sent him over the edge, or sent him over the edge. But yeah, that 600 grand is going to go towards our new development company. So we have bought over. All Japan Pro Wrestling, they exist no more. We've signed every wrestler from them that's under the age of 31 and they have been sent to NXT UK, so I don't need to deal with them until they're ready. Then they'll come to NXT. And we also signed, uh, we also took over the OZ Joshi Academy. We've kept them, and that is now NXT Joshi Oz Academy in Japan. So we've sent uh, a lot of the under 28 wound wrestlers because obviously they peak a wee bit earlier and uh, hopefully they can develop well and one of them bring them to either NXT UK or NXT and then inevitably the main roster but we've probably signed about 40 people and I doubt we even used half of John Cena's wages so good purchase but that's not why we're here we're here for war games so we are at Madison Square Garden we'll just jump to that Hopefully we can close that cell at 18,500 because it is a hotbed area, so more people will come. But let's jump into the show now, shall we? This is NXT War Games. So we start the show with our user character in control, and that is Triple H. He is just basically reveling in the fact that he's nearly sold out Madison Square Garden with the NXT brand. And he just wishes everyone has a fantastic show. For NXT, that got an 83 rating. The opening contest was the female War Games match, the best of NXT Revolution, and it was a poor matchup that saw the team of Dakota Kai, Priscilla Kelly, Candice LeRae, and Britt Baker defeat Tegan Knox, Shotzi Blackheart, Tony Storm, and Tennille Dashwood in a War Games match in 1903 when Dakota Kai pinned Tennille with a top rope splash. So overall, pretty decent. Uh, I'm happy with that one. Everybody's kind of in like an even playing field, but I'm hoping the heels can benefit from that and we can really kick on and yeah, go from there. So 52 is pretty decent. Just Britt Baker off her game. Tania doing some good work as Britt's manager as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with the women's division. But a few of them are losing. But uh, if the women can get a 52, then hopefully... Yeah, the men can do a wee bit better. Dakota then cuts a promo. She's going to the main roster. She's had it with NXT. And uh, that basically means that, uh, yeah, she is going to be... Yeah, she's going to be in a, a good position on the main roster. Next up was the Cruiserweight Championship on the line. It was a decent matchup. Jordan Devlin defeats Kushida in 12-21 with a moonsault. Devlin makes the 8th defence of the NXT Cruiserweight title. There wasn't really any intention of taking the title off Devlin. I don't have any plans for him in the main roster at the moment. So him getting a good victory here continues his momentum over a veteran. And the 6th to rating means he'll probably get to the year 2021 looking for a Cruiserweight Classic and looking to defend his championship there. Next up we hype promo for Dexter Loomis. We're obviously looking at people that push post NXT War Games. 
and he's going to be one of those people that got a 48 rating. And next up we had a decent matchup that saw the grizzled young veterans defeat Moustache Mountain in 11.36 when Zach Gibson pinned Trent Seven with a frog splash and it was the grizzled young veterans who make defence number two of the NXT tag titles. So Tyler Bate and Trent Steven are obviously going to put them over, they're the more over tag team, but in this situation you've got to put the, the team that needs it over and a 65 rating, getting the crowd hotter, can only enhance their tag division. So the Scarlet Empire will be happy with that victory. Next up we have Peter Avalon in the building and he cuts his promo and it's a 38 rating. It's a nice and simple promo, just saying he's excited to be in NXT and he's going to turn his 0 and 1 2 5 run into a 1 2 5 and 0 run. And he gets that first win against Curtis Axel in 925 with Martinez, 47. It's a simple matchup when it comes to Peter Avalon. It's just funny. And we're going to make him win as many matches as we can with a great streak. Ah, oh, that's me just elbowing the desk as we carry on. Oh, this isn't good. And about they had a decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Eli Dragunov did defeat Mojo Rawley in 11.54 when Mojo Rawley was disqualified when Kelly and Dane ran in and attacked Eli Dragunov. So, just a 44 rating because injuries, I've noticed in this, hamper shows quite dramatically, so that's going to be 5 points off. They don't click either, so that's going to hamper a few points. So I'd probably say it was maybe a bit of a 60 rated matchup if everything went well, but nothing went well uh, in the North American Championship in this instance stays on board with Mojo Rawley and of course the Scarlet Empire. So three titles remain with them and they'll be delighted coming out of this event. I don't know what I call it, a pay-per-view. Cheers, Hurricane. Damien Priest cuts a promo, just bigging up that he's going to make an impact post War Games, and that's a 46 rated segment there. And a decent matchup, Tessa Blanchard defeated Io Shirai in 1416 with a pile driver. Tessa Blanchard is the new NXT Women's Champion, so a 73 rated match is spectacular. 56 for Tessa, 72 for Io. Both of them have great chemistry together, which is good to find out and makes me kind of hope I wanted to keep EO on the NXT brand to abuse that rating. But I want her on the main roster, so hopefully Tessa can have a long run as champion and EO can especially help the, the Raw brand going forward and I cannot wait for EO versus Asuka on the main roster. Bit of a arrogant promo from Tessa but she's still babyface just saying she's delighted to become champion. And I got a 48 rating for Tessa. And uh, next up we had the 30 minute Iron Man match, which was about the had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. The feud ending win for Tommaso Ciampa as he defeated Karrion Cross with two falls to one within the 30 minute time limit. A 68 rated matchup, uh, we had to keep Cross looking strong, but I want Ciampa looking good going onto the main roster. And it's a good way to send them there, ending the Great War feud. In terms of this, yeah, everything seems to be pretty good. No negatives there. So, solid. Dream had an over-the-top entrance, which unfortunately just does not work out in these in this game. It's still a lack of interesting things happening. There's a 54. And the NXT Championship match had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd as the Velveteen Dream defeated Walter in 22-01 with the power line giving him his first title defence and a spectacular victory. A 76 rated match puts a lot of pressure onto the match that's going to follow, but the good chemistry between them, which is good to know about, uh, can see this feud continue because there's no plans to call up either man to the main roster. So that leads us. Dream Celebration gets a 69, so that's a good wee segment there. Um, we finished the show with a 69 rated match as well. The Men's War Games, which was decent. And at Masteros del Cerro, Dragon Lee Bandiro, Flamita and El Hijo del Fantasma defeated Imperium, Marshall Barfell, Fabian Eichner, Alexander Wolfe and Timothy Thatcher in a War Games match in 2805 when Dragon Lee pinned Alexander Wolfe with Operacion Dragon 
or however it's pronounced. Because of the lack of overness for Wolf and Eichner, then it was always going to be the baby faces that won, but it's one of those ones where they may not be as over as like Barfell and Wolf and Thatcher, but they're absolutely talented, so giving them a big win in the main event of War Games was, yeah, just showing that this is a force to be reckoned with. And this has obviously been recorded just as soon as he's taken his mask off. Typical. But anyway, we increased the pop in 40 regions. We ended up with a 70 rated show. And yeah, there's the likes of Tony Storm, Tenille Dashwood and El Hijo del Fantasma, who were used too much. But overall, pretty solid by that. We'll jump to the main screen and see what's going down. We'll see who the winners and the losers are of this particular event. But yeah, pretty happy with it. As I say, it's all about the development, but at the same time, you, you hope for big uh, pop gains and not too many big pop losses. So a lot of items happening on this Saturday show. Uh, we'll just jump straight to NXT, so we'll look here if anything affects War Games, drawn a lot of praise. John Moxley's in a feud. He's going to be feuding up against Cody in the future and dragging off. Just out for a few weeks, that's fine. And we get nearly 2 million viewers for TakeOver. So, let's take a look and see who the winners and losers of that event would be. Just looking for people to book Britt Baker, roughly about the same over this. Dakota Kai, 37, it's roughly about the same. Dragon Lee, 57, he's. Probably up at mid card level already in the main roster. Uh, he's still got a long way to go. Former King Qu King Quirno in it, I believe. Eel Shirai is down to 48, that's not too horrible. Dragon off at 45. Who else was on? Devlin's. That's Jordan Grace. Devlin's at 54 over this. He's at a good position. Carrying Cross is what I'm worried about. No, he's still reasonably a good 57. Close for a I mean roster run, Barfell still 47, Overness, Peter Avalon 33, 34, Shotzi still 35, Tommaso 58, perfect. I don't know if he's going to win his top uh, main roster debut but he'll be in a good position anyway with that but that's good to see Walter 54, the Dream's up at 60 so he's, he's close to go. Overall. I'd say that's a, a very successful show. So that's the end of the video. Thanks very much for watching. As I say, it's been a pleasure. I'm now going to go ahead and book Survivor Series. If you did enjoy it, remember to leave a comment. And as I say, I'll get back to you as quick as we can on that. Any thumbs up and subs are all deeply appreciated as always. And remember to check out the stuff in the description below. Great places to get more mods, some more written and verbal content, and of course the game itself. So check those links out. But until next time, this is Twitter with Maxwell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all real soon. Bye bye.